I think it's fair to say that this project has been the biggest and most involved project to date for George Woodshop Podcast. Now, if you have managed to stick it through till the very last video, so part 12, congratulations and uh, many thanks for watching all of the videos so far. So, uh, big welcome to everyone that's subscribed so far and, and all of that sort of stuff. Now, this is not another construction video, this is the finale. This is how to use your workbench because, let's face it, this is a pretty nice workbench and there's a lot of features which might not be so obvious at the uh, at first glance. So let's get into that. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this style of workbench, you've probably never seen a wagon vise before and you're probably a little bit unsure on how to use it. Now, these are a really universal vise. They're brilliant to have uh, on hand because they help in planing boards by hand. They also really help in uh, holding smaller boards in place as well. Uh, so. The first thing I'm going to do is just quickly show you the way that this vise works and a few tricks to use it. Now if you've not used a wagon vise before, you're going to soon fall in love with a vise like this. Now not only does it enable you to clamp boards to the surface of your workbench without sort of being intrusive, so say that you're working on a short piece like this, you can clamp that between your two dogs, so these small things here are called dogs. So you can clamp that in your vise. And then you can work on the surface. So say that you're using a hand plane, uh, maybe you're sanding it. So especially on smaller pieces, this is really handy because with these small pieces, it's often really hard to use a power sander. Now, this isn't just useful for short pieces. You can go as long as your workbench allows. So for my workbench, which is two meters long, I can really, uh, clamp pieces which are about 1.8 meters long at the end of the day. On top of working on the faces, this is also useful for working on the edge of shorter pieces. So you could actually clamp your workpiece on edge between dogs and you can actually come in and, and plane away and, and not have too many problems. Now clamping your boards between dogs can cause problems if you're trying to mill your timber. So say you're using hand planes because by pinching the board together, you could actually potentially put a bow in it unintentionally. So another good solution is for smaller pieces. You can just use one, one dog, butt your workpiece up against that, and then use your hand plane going into the dog. Now, obviously being a dog in a round hole, it can move around quite easily. So the other solution is, is taking two dogs, putting them in parallel holes, and then using a narrow piece of wood, so something like plywood, you would butt that up against your two dogs. Now you would plane towards that and you would have a much uh, sort of more stable surface. Another great accessory for your workbench is something like this. So as you can see, I store them in my leg, uh, but these are just called a hold fast and all they are, are pretty much a alternative clamp. So instead of using something like an F clamp to clamp something to your bench, you can use your hold fast. So say that we're working on this piece of timber and we're doing a mortar, so we want this to be locked uh, solid to our workbench. We place our work, our work piece where we want it, uh, we slide in our hold fast, and then with a quick blow of the hammer, our work piece is locked in solids. So really, really useful. And uh, depending on where your holes are placed in your workbench, you have unlimited clamping uh, options really. So. Say you're working on a weird workpiece and you need a clamp right in the middle of it, you just put a hole in the middle of your bench with your 19mm spade bit, drop in your hold fast and you have a clamp. So really useful accessory. Now we've mentioned working on the edge of a board with narrower stops, so using it between dogs, but if you've got a slightly longer board, that's where the leg vise comes in handy. So we've got our leg vise set up for this size board here. So we can just simply clamp our board in place and start working on the edge. What about our longer boards? So say that we need to work on the edge of a two meter long board or a one and a half meter long board. Well, we can still work with that fairly easily. So I've got this bit of pine here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna use one of my hold fasts, which go through the leg to secure this in position. And of course, on the other side, I'll use my leg vise to secure it. 
So now we have this really nice long board secured which won't go anywhere. So if we need to say joint the edge of this using our, our number seven plane, we can do that with relative ease. So while we're looking at our leg vise, let's talk about how to use it. So this is a parallel guide vise. So we've got this guy down the bottom with a series of holes. Now, say that we're working on a workpiece like this, so this is probably about 20 to 25 millimeters thick. What we want to do is take a pin of some description. So you can use something like an old screwdriver. Uh, you could use a quarter inch socket extension. Uh, what I use on my other bench is this old burnisher. So this is just an old cheap burnisher, which I use, which works quite nicely. Or you could also use a wooden dowel. Just keep in mind that there is a lot of uh, stress placed on a dowel like this, so it could potentially snap on you. So the idea behind it is we select one of the holes in our parallel guide, which is the closest match to the thickness of our workpiece. So 20 millimeters is this board. So I'll place in my pin. So from there, it's just like any other vise, we just screw it in until it makes contact. So this bottom pin here stops movement from the bottom so it won't rack in a diagonal uh, direction. And then from there, all of the clamping pressure is targeted towards the workpiece. So this is a really solid connection. So what if you're a hand tool woodworker and you like to cut dovetails by hand? Well, this is where the leg vise comes in as well. So we've got a pin in the middle of our vise, but luckily we've also got quite a wide opening. So we can actually clamp our workpiece into position and then come in with our handsaw and start cutting our dovetails. Okay, so just because I'm stopping at this point with my workbench, it doesn't mean that you guys have to stop here by any means. There's a lot of other things that you can add to this workbench to make it work better for your application. So, for example, on my other workbench, I have put a shelf between the base here, so on the bottom I call it a parcel shelf, where I store, you know, some of my hand plans and the tools that I usually use around the workbench. So, that's a really good idea and it's easy to do. You just put a cleat on the inner side of your rails and then put down either a solid wood or a plywood sort of base. Now, if your bench is going to be your main work center, so in other words, you're going to be using it for everything from cutting joinery to also applying your finishes, another good idea is to put a bracket on the underside here, so on the end where the wagon vise isn't, where it might hold something like a uh, brown paper roll. So you can actually slide out some paper over the surface of your workbench, uh, you know, do all your glue up or your finishing and not risk damaging the top of your workbench. Now the other cool thing about doing that is you can reuse that paper. So if you've only got a little bit of glue on there, once it's dry, just roll it back up and use it next time. So it's not being too wasteful with that brown paper. Now another add-on to your workbench is, well really it's more of a detraction from your workbench, is putting more dog holes all over the place. So uh, here I've got my two strips of dog holes which are parallel to one another and evenly spaced, so every three inches. Um, but if you're working on a strange workpiece and you need clamps in the middle, add a couple of holes throughout the middle of your workbench so you can use your hold fast, so those L-shaped brackets that I showed you earlier because uh, that there will just develop your workpiece, uh, will develop your workbench to work with the sort of workpieces that you work with because I didn't say work enough in those sentences. Okay, so hopefully that's given you a bit of an idea of what these workbenches are sort of capable of from the get-go. So, of course, with the use of jigs and fixtures that you make to, you know, work with your bench, it becomes a whole different bowl game, but that's for you to sort of uh, go out and experiment with and find out what works for you because at the end of the day, we've done the hard work, now it's up to you to sort of figure out what works best for you with a bench like this. Now. A huge thanks to everyone that has come along for the, uh, the very long ride that it's been making this workbench. So uh, it's been the most involved project that I've done for the website uh, ever and it's been fun. I mean it's been stressful because I had about three or four commissions come through in the time that it took to make this workbench so time was always a bit of an issue for me uh, but I feel that we've given you a really good foundation uh, to go off of it. So if you want to build a bench like this, you can and, and feel confident in doing so. Now, of course, I would love to see what you guys come up with. So if you guys do build a bench like this, make sure you email, email me some photos. So uh, all my contact details are on the website, so georgewoodshop.com. Uh, 
And if you email me the photos, I'd love to showcase them on my Facebook page with your permission and also on the website itself. So uh, make sure if you do that, send them my way. Once again, a big uh, welcome and, and thanks to all my new subscribers and of course my existing subscribers. Without, without my old subscribers, the show wouldn't have been happening. So uh, really do appreciate you guys for, for coming along and supporting the show. Uh, and yeah, so that has been the end of one long project. Now, just quickly, I won't be doing a video next week, so I'm having the Christmas week off. Uh, so this is the last project of the year, but then with 2014, we'll be straight back into it with projects and technique videos and all sorts of stuff, which um, I'm pretty excited about. So huge thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Head over to my Facebook page as well, like that page, so facebook.com slash Woodshop and also head over to my, my website where you can purchase plans for this bench, you can leave comments, you can look at past videos and all sorts of things. So, and uh, make sure you have a happy Christmas and a great new year and I'll, I'll be seeing you in the new year. So thanks for watching.